Permission to vote. Permission to drive. Permission over one's own body. Permission to lead. Permission's a funny thing. And while we certainly have laws and bylaws in which it is formally regulated, and we've made changes to those laws to improve equality, there remains etiquette, history, and the socialization of women, which implies a lack of permission or an invisible boundary. And sometimes when we get too close to that line, we get shocked, like an electric fence. Not all permission is granted equally, and if we hope to achieve successful equality, we must lead without permission. I'd like you to imagine that you're a 13-year-old girl. You're sitting at your computer and you're typing away looking for historical leaders. You're looking for some inspiration. And I'd like you to imagine being that 13-year-old girl and not seeing yourself in the results. I'm a business and success coach. I build a lot of presentations. And a few months back, I decided I was going to look for some new women leaders because I'm guilty of using the same ones over and over again. And so I was going to find out about more women who changed and shaped this world. And I promise you, the search started innocently enough. I searched great leaders, greatest leaders, great leaders in history. Best leaders, important leaders, admirable leaders, best CEOs, biggest leaders, examples of leaders. And in each search, what I found really overwhelming was the lack of women. We make up 50% of the population, right? 51, actually, but I digress. So I click on the picture that comes up first under 100 greatest leaders of all time, and I see one woman. And I'm embarrassed to admit I have absolutely no idea who she is. Now, I consider myself pretty enlightened, and I'm aware of the biases that exist, but the truth of this hit me like a ton of bricks. What are the implications here? Where are all the women? Why aren't their stories being told? Who's this woman? And this sparked a trip down the search engine rabbit hole. We've all been there, right? And I'm scrolling list after list after list, picturing or recognizing the male leaders listed. JFK, Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, you know, Fidel Castro, Che Guevara, Hitler. Oh, my heart sinks. Hitler made the list of 15 greatest leaders of all time. Not one woman to be found. So as I continue on my list, the few women that I am finding tend to be the same ones over and over again. So Eleanor Roosevelt, Margaret Thatcher, Mother Teresa, Malala, Mary Curie, these are amazing women. They are not the only women in history to have made a mark. So you might be wondering, okay, Risha, why didn't you just search for female leaders? Well, that's what I did next. And there she was, Rachel Carson. That was her name. She is credited as being the mother of environmentalism. I have never heard of this woman in my life. I had no idea who she was. And I'm ashamed to admit that as I went on through the list of 100 greatest women leaders of all time, I only recognized about 23 by name and like maybe nine by their photograph. So it's not that these women leaders don't exist, right? Of course they do. We've all met these women. They're an inspiration, right? They're our teachers, our mentors, our managers, our mothers, our grandmothers. These women exist. These stories exist. They're just not being told. So this led me to do a little bit of research on women's rights and the struggle for equality. Did you know that here in Canada, women were not considered persons under the law until 1929? If that isn't dehumanizing, I don't know what is. But this can't possibly be how we treat women today, right? Ever hear of Tinder? So former VP of Marketing Whitney Wolf heard sued Tinder in 2014 for sexual harassment, claiming that her title 
as co-founder had been stripped away because, and I quote, having a young woman listed as co-founder made the company seem like a joke. Well, they settled out of court and Whitney's co-founder title was reinstated. And just for frame of reference, Mark Zuckerberg was 19 when Facebook was founded. And a quick Google search will find you four young men under the age of 19 who've been millionaire app developers before their 20s. This is not a question of age. This is a question of gender and expectations. Now, Whitney's gone on to be founder and CEO of Bumble, which Forbes now lists as a net worth of $1 billion. Despite Whitney's ability to rise above, women are painfully underrepresented in leadership, lawmaking, and government roles. In fact, across all countries, it's fair to say that women represent less than 25% of government. That stands true here in North America. And in Forbes' top 500 companies, only 24 of the CEOs from that list are women. That's less than 5%. Now, this isn't news to any of us. And we're making progress, but that progress needs to be fast-tracked. And I'm not here to start a war of the sexes. I promise you. What I'm saying is our interpretation of the people responsible for achievement and leadership and the history documenting it are skewed. And as a result, women don't see themselves in the leadership landscape or in popular historical documentation. So how are we gonna close this gap, right? I'd like to invite the women to help me change this leadership landscape because it starts with us of the scores of brilliant, talented, successful women that I have met over the course of my life, very few consider themselves to be leaders. They lack the confidence to step into that role. Are they avoiding the spotlight? Could be. Why? The socialization of women as the quiet, fair, soft, gentle, polite, obedient sex has a lot to do with it. For eons, women have been celebrated as being selfless caretakers concerned about the well-being of others. To be a leader, you have to start with self-examination. You have to discover your strengths, know your skills, and know yourself in a deeper way. So I use this personality temperament tool called Personality Dimensions, and <clears throat> it takes the four common personality types, and it highlights their strengths and their growth opportunities. And every single personality type has strengths that lend to effective leadership. Every single one. And when I take women through this tool, it is both touching and empowering to watch the light bulb go off when they realize that the traits that they have devalued for years are the ones that make them a great leader. These are the people who you want at the helm of your teams. They're capable of deep, purposeful relationships. They excel in communication and diplomacy. These are the people you want in charge of a crisis. They are resourceful, they are dynamic, they are quick, and they're competitive. These are the people you want in charge of your education. They value knowledge and competence. They have a vision for the future, and they've done their homework. These are the people you want in charge of your project. They embrace responsibility. They are highly organized, and they're ticking off that to-do list, and they value a job done on time. But when I speak to these women, they are not convinced that they are leaders. And in fact, they don't know how to leverage these skills into great leadership. So then, 
how can I facilitate the untangling and retraining of these beliefs? Through self-discovery. I'd like to share just a little bit of my personal discovery story with you. So I used to work for a large corporation, and those that moved fastest up the ladder, those that had the biggest successes, were bold, outgoing, and outspoken. They were also mostly men. So as I watched these men move quickly through the organization, I was ambitious. I wanted to move quickly, too. So I emulated their behavior, which got me noticed. And I received an opportunity through a management training program to do a self-assessment and invite others to rate me on my performance and skills. That was an enlightening assessment. <laughs> Not only was it enlightening just because of the results, but the interpretation of the results was enlightening. I was assigned a mentor, and her interpretation of the results was that people were put off by me. I was aggressive, I was intense, my personality, too big. I offended people. And that was going to be a barrier to my ability to move forward in this company. I just sat there stunned. I didn't think that my personality was like so out of line from what I was seeing in the leaders in this company, I went home deflated. I felt misunderstood, I felt frustrated, I felt guilty. For the first time, I doubted my ability to interpret and read others, and I had never questioned that myself before. I started seeing strengths I had as weaknesses. For years, I'd been confident in my leadership abilities, and in one day, I was completely out of esteem. I loved that job, but I left it, because this was the beginning of my personal discovery journey, in which I would learn to be myself, big personality and all. So over the next year, I spent a lot of time asking some pretty hard questions. And I had a wonderful mentor who gave me access to a strength-finding assessment. And while the results weren't surprising, they were reassuring. I had the skills and the drive to be a leader. I am passionate about elevating other people. I want to see more inclusivity in this world. I know and I believe that everything I do, I do with integrity. And I also wanted to start to change the balance in my life, where work didn't define me. And now, well, I love my job, and I love my life, and my confidence is rebuilt, and I'm known as a respected leader in my industry and in my community. But I had to find out who I was and what motivated me before I flourished as a leader. And so I truly believe that it's through self-discovery that we find the confidence to lead. So this kind of turned into me building this confidence and leadership program. And during my market research, I spoke to woman after woman after woman who said they didn't believe they had the credentials, the forum, or the permission to lead. Oh, permission became a very, very disturbing trend in the results of my anonymous surveys and one-on-one -on -one interviews to the point where I thought, I have to take a closer look at this concept. Who is responsible for this permission? And so as I dove head on into the world of permission, I started to realize the obstacles that were standing in the way of most of these women stepping into their leadership role were self-imposed. As women, we are accustomed to two sets of rules. It starts when we're really young, and it perpetuates into adult life. We're inundated with expectations, laws, regulations, 
And even after those laws are abolished, those regulations are retired, the damage has been done. We tell ourselves stories that are not based in fact. And to quote Byron Katie, a thought is harmless unless we believe it. And we're left believing we are not equal, we are not strong, we are not capable, we are not worthy, we are not confident, we are not leaders. And I have to quote her again because she hits the nail right on the head. Don't believe everything that you think. Permission is overrated. I want you to think about what would happen if you just decided right here, right now, today, to be a leader at work with your friends, in your life, at your home. What kind of impact would that have? You don't need a title. You don't need an invitation. And in very fact, you don't get an invitation to the leadership party. This is the party you have to crash. You do not need permission to lead. I am so grateful to be here on this stage and in a place in my life where I can say without qualification that I'm a leader and I don't need permission to take that title. And I'd like to invite the other women to step into your leadership shoes without permission, without apology. And I'd like to leave you here with three takeaways. Sound fair? One. Ladies, step into your spotlight. We need to hear your voices. We need to celebrate your accomplishments. I want that 13-year-old girl to read about you on the internet. In order for us to achieve equality in leadership, we have to be seen. Two, everyone, invest in some self-discovery and elevate others. Elevate women. There's plenty of room for everyone to be a leader. This isn't a conversation about a selected few. Elevate those women that bring you light. Elevate those women that help you shine. Elevate those women that empower you to lead. Elevate those women that need a boost. Elevate those women that don't see their value. Elevate those women that are hiding their light. And when we talk about these women, let's talk about them in strong, empowering language. Because the success of one woman does not mean less success for you. Three. Women of the world, lead without permission. Ask for what you want out of this life. Give yourself the same Love, support, and cheerleading that you're giving everybody else because you deserve it. Honor your value. I intend to show up in those search results. I want my story told. And I owe it to every woman over this entire planet to lead without permission. Thank you.